right, let's get started here. Um, hope you guys are having a great conference so far, learning a lot. Um, my name is Kelly Tisdell. I'm with Broadleaf Commerce. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about uh, Broadleaf and the role Spring plays uh, with Broadleaf. We, we've, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about what it is, what, uh, what kind of things uh, Broadleaf offers um, out of the box, some of the innovative things that we've done technically uh, to... Uh, to make it as flexible as possible. We're going to get into the, uh, some code a little bit. Uh, bear with me a little bit because um, I, I am going to do a, a few demos just to show the features and, there, and it's, it's a little bit important because when you start seeing some of the stuff that we do with the, uh, with the code, um, it, you're gonna, it, it's going to make a little more sense if you actually have some context. So um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, I'm going to talk. I'm just going to uh, talk about who I am real quick. Uh, uh, give an introduction to Broadleaf and what it is. Um, I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about the features, as I mentioned, and uh, along with a demo. Uh, then we're going to get into some of the major architectural components. And towards the end, and it won't be it won't be a long ways off. Actually, this is the first first five six bullets are going to go pretty fast. We're going to get into the code and talk a little bit about uh, what we did. Uh, and the case study, as far as extending Broadleaf Commerce goes, is uh, uh, where we uh, I, I went ahead and implemented something just for the demo uh, as far as uh, functionality goes with uh, flash sales and talk about the, what that is as well. And then we'll talk about a little uh, the future of Broadleaf and what what's on our roadmap uh, going forward. So. Um, as I mentioned, I'm Kelly Tisdell. I'm a software architect, uh, uh, engineer at Broadleaf. I uh, am also a sales guy and a kind of jack of all trades, uh, master of whatever needs to be done. <laughs> um, I'm uh, I'm actually from Canada originally. I'm living in Austin, Texas, uh, and I uh, and I do a lot of things besides uh, write code. <laughs> so uh, anyway. Um, all right, Broadleaf is an open source e-commerce framework. Uh, what, what does that mean? Well, it's a, it, it's a framework for building e-commerce uh, websites and, and systems. Uh, it is, uh, it's open source. It's uh, licensed under, under the Apache 2 license, so you can download it. You can get it off uh, GitHub, off of uh, Maven Central. Um, and, and really, as a framework, it's a collection of libraries and dependencies. Uh, so it's a, it's a number of jar files. And those libraries and dependencies include a number of JPA entities, uh, a number of services, DAOs, uh, some workflows, um, utilities, and some, some default configurations. And we'll talk about those default configurations and why they're important later. Um, it also, uh, because it's got a number of, uh, of entities built into it, it uh, um, it, it's got a, a number of database tables that go with it as well. Um, but it's also, it's more than just a framework because it's, uh, it, we provide a, a starter application for you so that you don't have to start from scratch and wonder how to, how to, how to get started or what to do next. We actually give you a, a starter app that I'm going to show you here. And, uh, and that starter app is basically a starting point for you to take, download, install, uh, get it up and running, either reskin it, add some new functionality to it, um, or uh, uh, integrate with other systems, do whatever you need to do with it. It's very flexible, and uh, so hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys will see that uh, in a minute. All right, I'm going to go ahead, and th that's why I said th this is going to go fast as far as the demo goes. I'm going to demo a couple of things here uh, as far as what, what Broadleaf actually provides out of the box. Um, and then we'll uh, just just give you guys a sense of that that starter project that I'm talking about. This will give you an idea of what that starter project actually has in it. Um, I mean, it really is sort of e-commerce in a box. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. All right. This right here is uh, what we call the Heat Clinic. It is a uh, fictional uh, e-commerce website that we built for the purpose of demoing and allowing people to get started with Broadleaf. Uh, it's running on my uh, local box here. Uh, I'm running just right out of the box. It's got there's there's uh, ant tasks and and uh, Maven uh, goals and things like that. Basically, to fire up Jetty and uh, fire up a a local HSQL database. Um, it's very easy to get running. I mean, literally, you don't even need Eclipse to uh, to get it started. So. Um, anyway, a uh, couple of nice features about it. As you can see, it's nicely skinned. Uh, it's got, uh, it's got uh, products, uh, product catalog. It's got a number of uh, categories, product categories here. And you can see uh, it's, 
internationalized as well up top here. Um, when I start clicking on some of the categories, we start seeing a number of these products that are available. And uh, so we've got hot sauce, a lot of different kinds of hot sauce. We've also got t-shirts. And, uh, um, and th there's some uh, clearance items and so forth. Uh, we've also... Uh, we've also got a, uh, we're also using solar in here, so uh, we've got a, a, search, an avail a search engine available, and, which is kind of interesting because if I, uh, if I search for sauce, I get back sauces, as you might expect. Um, if I search for uh, salsa, I don't get back a whole lot, but maybe you might expect that, unless... Um, you go to a Spanish-speaking part of the site, and you get back a lot of salsas just because of the translation. So uh, we've done a lot to uh, a lot to customize uh, or, or to uh, make the search features um, quite rich. We've done a lot to make the uh, uh, the catalog rich, and uh, we've we've done a lot to, uh, to to work on internationalization. The other thing you might notice here, I'm going to switch back uh, real quick, and uh, just go to whoa. Awkward. Um, hopefully, hopefully we'll uh, recover from that quickly. Um, okay. So the other thing you'll notice here is that uh, when we're when we're viewing the uh, viewing these uh, products right now, you can see a price on them. They're uh, they're, they're priced uh, based on their locale and their currency. Again, when you switch, uh, uh, one of the things that we found is that a lot of people want to charge different prices depending on uh, any number of things like uh, uh, like a country for example and uh, uh, let's see you'll notice that the uh, that the prices on these things change um, based on the locale uh, Broadleaf's got some uh, very interesting dynamic pricing features that we'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk about a little bit uh, a little bit later um, okay so if I now I'm gonna go switch back to the US here and uh, if I uh, if I want to add something to my uh, to my cart, uh, pretty easy to do. Um, the other thing, and and I want to add a couple of things. I want to one of the things that's interesting is that we've got uh, we've got the concept of of uh, product options for for products. Broadleaf's catalog is broken down into uh, products and SKUs. Products are sort of a uh, an umbrella for for SKUs. You can have a t-shirt for example like this, hot like a habanero t-shirt which is which is a uh, a product but it comes in a number of different sizes and colors. Those are the the various SKUs. So uh, so if we ch choose black and extra large that's my size. Uh, say that we'll buy it now. Now we've added it to the cart. Okay. So there's a lot of flexibility with this as far as, uh, uh, as, far as what you can do with the product catalog. When we go we'll take a look at the, uh, um, by the way, let me, sh this, uh, it says expired there. I'll explain that in a second. That's actually part of the demo that's, uh, that's a little bit half-baked. But uh, um, anyway, we can come in here. We can see right now that, uh, that this hot like a habanero uh, men's shirt uh, is, uh, has a discount right now. It's three, uh, $3 off. We've got uh, we've got both of those items in the cart. We can we can uh, modify the uh, the quantities, and uh, we see the changes. At this point, we can we can check out. Uh, I actually do go to a uh, uh, to a secure uh, secure site here. Um, I can register as a new user, and like I said, please uh, bear with me on some of this, just because. Just because it will be, it will become more interesting uh, when we look at the code. So I'm going to sh select sh shipping here. All right, now I can enter a credit card. And I think it's got to be in the future. And I want to go ahead and use my uh, my. Uh, shipping address for my billing address here. I've completed my order. It says uh, an uh, email is being sent to me. 
Uh, seems like a pretty standard e-commerce site, right? I mean, it doesn't. Uh, I, on one hand, it doesn't seem all that. Uh, it doesn't seem all that exciting, just because it does a lot of the things you're used to doing when you buy online. Um, but this is all right out of the box, and it's all, it's all open source. Okay. Um, part of the reason that part of the reason that we we started building Broadleaf was because there was no, there really wasn't a. Uh, uh, in our opinion, a, a, a great open source um, e-commerce framework out there. There are a lot of uh, really expensive ones. There are a lot of really bad ones. Uh, and what we tried to do was uh, was come up with an open source uh, an open source framework that allows you to extend it in the way that you want, use it in the way that you want. There's no black box. You can see see the code, and uh, and that's really what we're shooting for here. So. Even though it all seems like this kind of stuff you're used to doing, it's also uh, I, I, it's also fe a very feature-rich uh, framework right now, uh, sort of right out of the box. So, and and we'll get into how to make it a, a whole lot more uh, a whole lot more feature-rich in your own way, depending on your requirements. Um, so I can uh, at this point, there's a few other things that I can do. I've I, I, now that I've created a uh, I've registered and created an account, I can go in and view the order that I just created. And uh, and see uh, uh, see some information about uh, about what I bought. Okay, so um, that's the uh, that's the basic demo of of Broadleaf itself. I want to just go to the other side of the equation now, uh, and that's uh, that's administering uh, Broadleaf. Okay, this is one of those things that. Again, you don't normally get with a framework. When you're thinking of frameworks, you're thinking jars. You know, where, where's my? What do I plug in my palm? Um, this is uh, uh, this is another thing that comes right out of the box with Broadleaf, and uh, and it's really nice uh, uh, a nice UI for administering the site. All right, you'll notice it comes right in, and we can see the uh, uh, we can see the uh, catalog admin and we can see the the categories here and those those sort of equate to the the categories that, uh, along the top of the uh, the the uh, the main site all right uh, and and those things those things provide uh, a lot of data including uh, um, there's a lot of data including uh, what's active and uh, what the URL is and so forth all right the 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 next thing I want to go to is products it's a little it's a little more rich here but uh, you'll see that um, you'll see that I've got all my products here this is a paginated list and we can go in and click on click on any number of products here um, again there there are a lot of uh, a lot of properties and we're going to talk uh, I'm going to talk talk about uh, about how to extend th this admin uh, to uh, Take advantage of your own your own product extensions or your own uh, entity extensions that you uh, that you create. Well, I'll show you in a second. But there's uh, again, you can see uh, you can see the uh, the features and the ability to uh, do what you need to do with this admin. One other thing that's really uh, really cool about about the admin here is there there are uh, the oops. There are a number of promote. Uh, uh, there's a, the, a promotion builder here, and this promotion builder allows you to build rules-based targeted promotions. Okay, so here's a promotion. Remember, we saw the three dollars off. That was a pre-configured promotion that's uh, that comes as part of the uh, part of the site. Um, you can create promotions pretty easily. Um, this is a spring one promotion. Um, and this uh, this promotion, there's a lot of data here to create a promotion, but it, it, it becomes quite rich. What what we're doing is we're saying that this applies to an offer uh, to an order item. Uh, there's no max uses per customer, uh, no max uses per order. Um, there's a priority that we can set. We'll just leave all that uh, default. We'll say that this is a 20% off uh, promotion here, and uh, we'll go ahead and set its start date in the past. And uh, end date in the future. Um, it's a shared code, so somebody will have to type in the promo code to actually get this promotion. Um, and then there's a bunch of rule build, a number of rule builders that that come with this to allow you to uh, determine how how whether this uh, promo qualifies for the uh, uh, for, for a particular order or an order item. So one of the things that you can do is um, 
is set this up as a buy one get one order and then, there, and then there's a rule builder that goes with it so and say match all and uh, category name contains the word sauce okay and uh, so that's 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 basically how the how the promo builder works and it's very flexible so um, let me save that we'll come back to that in a bit um, Okay, now that you guys have seen, now that you guys have seen the, uh, the, the, both the website and the, the admin, so you've got a, a little bit of context about what Broadleaf is, now let's talk about how it's a framework, because right now it just looks like uh, uh, you know, an out-of-the-box out system that you have to install, and then you're going to, uh, and it's just configuration from there. And, and to some degree that's true, but there's actually, uh, there's actually some technology behind this that you'll be interested in, in seeing. Let me go back... Uh, Back to my slideshow. Um, first of all, let me just go ahead and uh, summarize the, uh, some, of the, some of the things that we've seen here. Uh, Broadleaf's got a catalog out of the box. Categories, products, and bundles. Uh, we, so we pr provide the ability for you to bundle products together uh, uh, and, and market them that way. SKUs, uh, faceted search, which we looked at. Uh, we've got customer domain, which includes profile, security, and uh, order history. Uh, it's got a, a, the shopping cart. I mean, you can't, can't have e-commerce without the shopping cart. Uh, the dynamic uh, catalog pricing, which allows you uh, to change the price depending on things like we, like we saw the, uh, uh, the lo locale. Um, the uh, targeted rules-based offers, we saw that in the, uh, in the admin tool there. Cross-sell, upsell, um, that's, all, that's all configurable and part of this. Basic uh, fulfillment and inventory. Fulfillment's one of those things uh, we're not looking at here, but uh, we, we, uh, when we create orders, we split everything into fulfillment groups. Uh, and fulfillment groups are things like, uh, when, you know, I, I bought two of something in one order, but I want one ship to my mom and one ship to me. Um, that, that allows you to uh, separate out fulfillment groups for the purpose of, uh, of shipping or fulfillment. Uh, basic inventory, you don't have to use this, but out of the box we provide uh, the ability to store inventory and inventory location, uh, per location. So, uh, so that's, uh, and, and, and frankly a lot of people, depending on, on the size of the implementation, will want to plug in a real inventory or warehouse system, uh, but we're providing a, a basic one uh, for you know, smaller to medium sized uh, businesses. Internationalization, of course, we saw uh, checkout. Uh, we went through that flow payment basic ta tax module. By the way, the the payment and the uh, the tax and everything that we that that we saw here were were uh, uh, effectively doing nothing. <laughs> they they store some data, but they don't. Uh, we're not uh, out of the box. That's just sort of a uh, a null uh, provider for those things. And uh, an administrative console uh, that uh, that contains pr uh, some content management features. I'm not going to go over the content management, but if you're curious about it, talk to me later. That's, that's an interesting feature because uh, uh, it's rules-based, meaning that you can actually show, show people different content snippets uh, depending on uh, who they are or any number of things. All right, back down to the meat of the technology a little bit. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a few honorable mentions, and then I'm going to dig in a little bit uh, uh, to... Uh, how Spring has really helped us to build this framework and make it extent, as, as extensible as it is. We really, Spring is sort of at the core of what we do, but we use a, a number of different frameworks to, uh, to build Broadleaf, okay? Uh, uh, big ones, Hibernate, Solar, uh, all the admin stuff is done in, smart, uh, in GWT and Smart GWT, and there's a reason for that. We'll talk about that in a second. Thymeleaf is the, uh, uh, is the uh, default templating engine, but again, you can swap that out, use JSP. We've even seen people use Flex. Um, and we uh, provide RESTful services out of the box as well. Okay. Um, Broadleaf relies on JPA for persistence. In particular, we're using Hibernate. There's no getting around Hibernate, so there's no swapping out your per persistence provider. Um, if, you, if you'd rather use you know, something else, then uh, that's not going to work with, with Broadleaf, unfortunately. And that's because there's a lot of things that we're doing with reflection to make sure that we can integrate any, any extensions or additional classes into, into, uh, 
in a broadleaf. That said, we try real hard to use as much standard JPA annotations uh, as, as we can. Uh, there are a few uh, Hibernate specific annotations that are, some of them are, some of them are by necessity and frankly some of them are just uh, uh, legacy uh, from, from JPA 1.0 when Hibernate had more functionality uh, than JPA did. Um, we make, uh, uh, we use Hibernate second level cache pretty extensively. That's really important, especially for large sites and high traffic and, and, and larger catalogs. And, uh, and an important point to make is that uh, our default inheritance strategy for JPA is joined uh, rather than say single table or something like that. That's important because um, anytime you extend Hibernate's uh, entities, we're, we're, you're gonna, there's actually gonna be another join and another table to contain the additional data. So not a bad thing, it's just uh, worth mentioning. Um, and by the way, these are, these are kinda uh, text heavy, but uh, they're not, there's only a few of them. Um, GWT and Smart GWT are used for the admin, as I mentioned. Uh, they really allowed us to build a rich admin portal. You guys saw it, it's, it's quite rich. Some of those rule builders and things like that are, um, are really a result of, of, of that, uh, uh, of those, being able to use those technologies to build those forms and so forth. Uh, we also, and another thing that's important is because we use, uh, we, we inspect your classes, the classes that you extend broadly uh, with. Um, we use those to paint the, the screens and to, and to build those forms. And that's, a, that's kind of an important point, and I'm gonna show, show you an example of that in a little bit. Uh, Broadleaf also provides uh, uh, a number of annotations that allow you to magically make uh, your new data appear in the admin. Again, I'll show you, but that's, uh, that's the whole idea. If you, if you, extend, uh, if you extend some of our entities um, in the way that I'm gonna show you, the admin will dynamically paint those and allow you to administer those new, uh, those new fields. Okay. Smart GWT provides some of the widgets that we're using uh, that keep things performant. You know, when you've got, uh, say, 10,000 uh, products in your catalog, we need to paginate through them. Makes it quite easy to do that. And, uh, um, and the newest generation, one of the things that we've had a lot of complaints, GWT is sort of a, uh, I don't even know if I'm supposed to say this, but I will. Uh, GWT has been sort of a, uh, a catch-22 for us. Nobody seems to like it, but it's really important for what, for, for what we've used it for. And... <laughs> So, uh, you know, and so one of the biggest complaints we've had is, man, I, I need to do some, I need to extend your admin in a, in a more advanced way. Do I have to write GWT? You know, do I have to, you know, learn GWT to do that? Uh, and the answer is now, no, you don't. <laughs> um, it, it doesn't hurt for sure, but, but uh, we're actually, we've actually done some work to, uh, uh, to make sure that you can actually add your own screens and so forth to the admin uh, that are, that are, Timely for JSP or whatever you want them to be. Okay, and of course uh, it all works great with Spring. Uh, speaking of Thymeleaf, Thymeleaf is our uh, uh, default templating engine. Um, I think there were a f at least one or two talks uh, about it here. Um, it's a great uh, uh, it's a great framework as well. Um, we. Uh, we use it, it's, it's similar to Velocity, it's similar to FreeMarker, um, it's modular and flexible, and, uh, and uh, one of the things, one of the biggest benefits of it is that we can, besides the fact that it supports natural templates, which we don't, which you don't actually get any benefit with us from, because we've, uh, we've architected in a way more for readability than for uh, uh, being able to have, you know, monolithic pages that you can read. Uh, that said, uh, you could do it that way if you wanted to. Um, but there's no compilation or pre-processing required, which is really important because now we can start sno storing uh, pages, dynamic pages, in the, uh, in the database for content management purposes. All right. Um, and, and of course, we use it for, uh, as a default engine for email as well. Um, Apache Solar um, is, a, is another great framework out there. It's sort of the de facto standard for open source searching. Uh, that's one of the things that I was demoing with the, with the free text search. Uh, we, our default is, approach is to use a, an embedded solar server. Uh, you can easily expand the two lines of configuration to change that to use a, uh, a standalone server or a cluster of servers. Uh, 
as I, sh as I was showing you earlier, we use multiple uh, indices for the, catalog, uh, for the catalog depending on things like uh, pro um, what, what you're going to search on. For example, a, uh, uh, the internationalization. Uh, we don't, if, you, if you're ser searching for something, if, you, if you're in a particular uh, locale, uh, certain, you don't get certain products back if they're not, uh, if they're not indexed for that locale. And uh, the way that we do that is to use resolvers to automatically select the correct index for you. All right, um, here's the kind of the meat and potatoes. I think this is why, we're, uh, why I'm speaking up here. <laughs> um, is, uh, is, is really the, is how Spring is involved, and this is a big deal for us. Um, it, uh, the reason, we, we, we had a choice when we built uh, Broadleaf, so I'm gonna take you back and give you a little history. Broadleaf uh, was found, uh, w became a project in 2009, and that was, it, things were starting to heat up a little bit with uh, Java EE5 at that time. So the question was, how do we build this? Should we use Spring or Java EE5, sort of standards-based? And uh, we made the decision to go with Spring for a number of reasons, and, and, uh, we, and we stuck with Spring for, uh, for those same reasons. Uh, the first of all was adoption. I mean, we were, we felt like Spring had a, more adoption and more momentum at the time than uh, Java EE, and, and that was a big reason for it. We also, we also have found over time, this was the case back then, but even now, excuse me, that, uh, that the Spring framework and, and Spring source has been more innovative, and, that, and that's natural. It seems normal because there's no, proce uh, there's no uh, uh, community process or, or, or uh, committees to make decisions. It's, uh, it's really pretty organic in the, way that, uh, in the way that Spring innovates. And we happen to use in, in Broadleaf Spring Security and Spring Social. We've got a client that's, that uses Spring AMQP. Um, I don't think we're doing anything with Spring Data, but there's absolutely nothing stopping you from plugging in whatever you need to where you need to. Okay? And the other thing, that, the other reason that, that this was really important to us, that, that using Spring was really important to us, was we wanted something that could deploy anywhere. We had, we had uh, some people that were interested in an open source framework, but we're trying to, we're trying to get, get away from big app servers. They wanted to go with Tomcat. And so that was an important thing for us. And, you know, frankly, there's nothing stopping you from deploying on WebSphere or WebLogic. We've actually done that, and it works great. Sometimes there's a few little things to get around, but, uh, uh, but it works great. Um, I, I'm, depl I'm deployed on Jetty right now. Deploying on Tomcat is uh, trivial. And frankly, I think tonight I'm going to try to deploy to Cloud Foundry. I wrote a blog about that last year right after, uh, right after this conference last year. And uh, uh, it, it, was, it was amazingly simple to, uh, to get it up and running. Uh, so all the promises about Cloud Foundry being simple uh, are absolutely true as far as I'm concerned because Spring does some interesting and complicated things that I was really concerned about. Uh, maybe it was going to get in the way of Cloud Foundry or vice versa. Not a problem. It, it ne never did. It was, uh, it was pretty smooth. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so Spring's at the, really at the heart of Broadleaf, okay? All the Broadleaf components that we, that, that, that we have, that we've bit, built or written, are all, they're all POJOs, and as, and as such, they're also either Spring Beans or JPA entities, okay? Uh, fairly lightweight, we're relying on Spring for, for a number of services that everybody pretty much knows about. I, I give them honorable mention here, they're not that interesting or exciting, except, that, uh, except to make a point that, uh, that we're using Spring pretty heavily the way that you guys are probably familiar with uh, you, uh, and used to using Spring for things like dependency injection, transactions, AOP, and uh, so forth, Spring MVC, and so forth. <clears throat> um, but Spring, Spring is really more than that to us because we would have never been able to do what we've done with, uh, with Java EE. Um, you know, and we probably could have rolled our own, but uh, it turned out that it was pretty uh, easy uh, to use Spring to do what we needed to do. So keep in mind, Broadleaf is a framework, um, and as, as such, we need to provide the ability for, for developers to use it, extend it, and override the functionality of Broadleaf. And the way that we've done that, and, 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 and we need to do that without, you know, without making it necessary for somebody to change our code. Okay, and the way that we've done that, even though we, we, we provide binary jars, and I mentioned earlier that, uh, that we provide a lot of default configurations, um, we, 
we've uh, we've provided something called uh, a merge application context, and it's a uh, it's a custom application context that we wrote that extends the Spring application context. But what it does is it allows you to specify a, num a number of uh, a number number of XML files that uh, uh, that contain um, your configurations, and as long as you use our Spring Bean names. Uh, and as long as you use uh, implement our interfaces, you can uh, implement additional interfaces. But uh, but as long as you implement ours, um, then you can then we'll just replace our functionality with yours. Okay, makes sense. We'll see it in a second. So um, it sounds uh, it sounds it, well. It's a it's a complicated process, but it's actually not that uh, difficult. It, it, but it is an int interesting point. And, that, and by the way, that's probably the most uh, important. That's probably the most important core thing that uh, core integration point between us and Spring is that uh, is that merge process because there's absolutely nothing that we that we can do uh, without without that, or there's no way we can allow you to inject your business logic, your uh, entities, and so forth into Broadleaf without without that. Um, but related to that are, are some, some environment specific things that, uh, that we, we couldn't get with Java EE. We couldn't get uh, with, uh, uh, and, and as far as I know, still can't get. Um, one, of the th one of those things, does anybody know, has anybody used the property placeholder configure in Spring? Yeah, it's a nice, uh, nice feature. We extended that as well and made uh, an environment specific one. So what we do is re we re we'll read a system property to figure out which environment, uh, which environment you're in. Um, and then we'll and then we'll inject the right properties based on uh, the, uh, uh, certain properties files into uh, your application context. Now the truth is, this is this is essentially this functionality predates Spring's uh, profiles, environment profiles. So if you if you're used to that or if you've seen it or you're wondering why 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 did they do that, <laughs> uh, it predates it, and chances are uh, this is going to go away because um, we, we're we're trying to stay in line with uh, with the way Spring does things. Um, now, related to that, though, is the, this uh, concept of uh, persistence unit post-processor. That's another one. Uh, show of hands if anybody's used it. Does everybody use JPA here? Or has, yeah? Um, okay, one of the things, one of the, one of the problems uh, that I found with JPA is there, there's really no way to sw swap out properties. Uh, uh, the the, the persistence.xml file allows you to set specific properties for a persistence unit, okay? Um, and, and that's pretty handy because different implementations have different properties, and some of those properties uh, are things like uh, uh, which dialect to use, which database dialect to use, or uh, whether uh, what what kind of DDL settings should I create or drop or validate, or what what should I do with the database on startup? Okay, uh, how much logging should I you know sh should I be logging the SQL? Those kinds of things are um, are set through those properties files. Well, the problem is. Those, those are usually different in every environment, and there's no good way in Java EE uh, to, to, change those, to change those without having to build, okay, without rebuilding. What we do is uh, we do something similar uh, with, between the property placeholder configure and the uh, persistence unit post processor. We take those two things and we allow you to control your persistence unit on a, on a per environment basis. So Spring's provided some very important uh, uh, utilities for us. Uh, that have made it um, quite nice and quite easy for you to have a great deal of control over your application. And by the way, I should mention that some of these, uh, some of these approaches and features, even if you're not uh, looking at an e-commerce system seriously or, or, or looking at, uh, uh, at using Broadleaf on a specific project, so you might want to take a look at the code because it's pretty interesting. Uh, you, might, you might find that some of these uh, uh, approaches that we've taken are, are useful to you. All right. I got to mention. I mean, I may as well. I got to mention there were some downsides, but I, I uh, to using and choosing Spring, but they're not. I I don't think they're really downsides as much as uh, as much as uh, they were a little bit of a nuisance. One and the, the 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 first one, the most important one, and it's the one that drives me crazy the most. Spring source tends to when they change things, we have to actually. <laughs> Refactor a ton of code to fix, you know, to fix what they changed. And one of the worst, one of the worst offenses that I found is 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 making methods private. 
that, that used to be public. So we're extending something, and all of a sudden it's private. We can't access it anymore. And next thing you know, we're writing a reflect, reflection code because that's the only way to, to actually get access to the things that we need. So that's not the, that's not the best, uh, best case. So I don't know if, uh, uh, shout out to Spring Source. Please, uh, make, you know, pr- please make everything at least protected. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, uh, again, that's really, really not a problem as much as, uh, much as it, <laughs> it has been a little bit of a nuisance. The other thing is, uh, and again, the, the, the debate rages, but uh, larger war sizes. Uh, we've got two, we got two war, war files um, in the admin. You could collapse them down technically. This isn't really a spring problem, except that uh, uh, the old, you know, the old uh, idea is that if you deploy it in an app server, you know, you got a, a 100K uh, ear file or war file. Now you're, uh, now you're using a 100 meg war file, and uh, we happen to have two of them. So, um, so they, they, they're bigger wars, they take more room and th- that, that's, that sort of thing. That said, once again, uh, I, I, it's, it's really more, more of a nuisance than it is a, uh, uh, a problem or a concern. But I thought I'd mention it at least to be fair and, and stay, uh, try to stay unbiased. <laughs> so, all right. Um, what I want to do now is so I, I, I'm going to go into this case study. Let me check the time here. Okay. I want to go into this case study a little bit um, and talk about, and talk about the, uh, specifically what, what I did to extend Broadleaf for the purpose of this presentation. Okay. And I'm going to walk through the code and talk about what you get if you just download the, the code and, and, and then what I wrote. And, and, and uh, what I did was is, was try to come up with a, an actual real world example that's actually that's kind of complex uh, f- for some people. Does anybody know? Does everybody know what a flash sale is? Okay, it's kind of the idea. The idea behind a flash sale, if you don't know, um, it's it's sort of like the ticket master concept or ticket sales. Um, th- there's volatile inventory when somebody when somebody adds something that, something to their cart, it indicates that they want to buy it. You need to reserve that inventory for them. Uh, but if they don't, if they abandon their card or, or don't check out or don't do something else, then you typically need to return that to inventory in a, in a reasonable amount of time, uh, so that it doesn't, uh, uh, so that somebody else can buy it. And flash sales are are an example of that, but they're usually a short one day or two day sales where inventory is limited. Okay, uh, Broadleaf does absolutely does not have flash sale f- functionality. Okay, it's on the roadmap. We're going to eventually put it in as a as a standard feature. But uh, it's it, we don't. There's nothing in Broadleaf that uh, that provides flash sales. So uh, in a in a couple of hours, I wrote flash sale functionality for the purpose of this demo, and and I did that to show how easy it is to actually uh, to actually uh, add some some complex functionality to Broadleaf right out of the box. Okay. So what we're gonna do? I'm what I'm gonna what I'm gonna show you guys is the fact that we extended SKU. Okay. Our our concept of a SKU. Uh, we extended uh, the order, which in Broadleaf terms, the order and the shopping cart are the same thing, uh, just in two different states. Um, and, we, uh, and we create some workflow activities. Broadleaf has a number of functions or, or uh, some, a number of the methods that uh, uh, the APIs invoke wor- workflows to allow you to plug in uh, activities anywhere you want in the workflow. Okay? Um, and then, uh, and then I, I create a bean that uh, uh, that runs in a background thread that uh, expires the cart if uh, if you haven't done something with it. Okay. Uh, let me stop there. Uh, come on. Um, let me do one thing real quick is, and, and go back here. And two of the I've got two products here actually. Um, I'm going to demo one thing real quick, product, and then we'll talk about how this is all happening. Um, sudden death hot sauce. All right. See this property right here, flash sellable? That, that does not exist in Broadleaf, okay? That is a new property that I've just added to an entity and it magically showed up uh, in the admin. Okay, and and it's and you can administer it. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that off of there, and I'm gonna take it off of there, and 
I'm going to go back to Broadleaf here and there's the sudden death hot sauce right there. All right. And this might. All right. And it is, uh, it is in my cart. Everything's good. It's not going to come out of my cart because it's not flash sellable right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you guys uh, why and how. By the way, please forgive my demo gremlins if, uh, if I have any here. They, uh, they might uh, come, up, come back to bite me. Um, so let, let, me, uh, let me go ahead and remove, uh, remove this from my cart. Go back to a kind of a clean state. And I'm going to go ahead and make this flash sellable again. <clears throat> All right. Now, when I go and add this to my cart, it's in my cart, and you'll see now I've got an expiry that I'm. This is a little little bit of UI code that we that we wrote just to just to put a timer on here to see it uh, to see how things work. And uh, as it counts down, I've only given now this is not this is not realistic, but I've only given about 30 seconds for uh, for you to do something else, like add another item to your cart before it uh, before it empties your cart again. Okay, um, but the point is, in 30 seconds. Three, two, one, zero. You'll notice that uh, it just uh, it just came back out. Okay, and I've got. We can go look in the database and things like that. I'm not going to do that unless somebody really wants to see that. But there's. Uh, uh, if you can trust me, at least for now, um, that uh, that there's actually inventory uh, updates happening in the database. We'll. Uh, I'll, I'll go in and show you in a, in a few minutes. Okay. The. Uh, um, in fact. Let me just do that because I I want to I want to make the point here, and uh, and I also want to give you an idea of I want to show you the database as well real quick. Um, this is uh, since we're getting into technolo the technology side of things and <clears throat> very secure, no password. Um, Actually, it's only a temporary database anyway, so it doesn't matter. All right, you'll see, so there's a lot of tables. Broadleaf's got a lot of tables, um, for better or for worse, but it uh, um, gives you kind of an indication of the type of uh, functionality that we're providing. Okay, and if I go look at um, BLC inventory, I've got, uh, I've got this, uh, this first item right here, quantity available, 10. This, uh, this is for that particular SKU. Uh, I don't have inventory for everything. I've got, for that particular SKU, I've got a quantity of 10. If I go, um, if I go back over here and uh, add that to my cart and come back down and refresh that, now the quantity is 9, okay? In about, I don't know, 20 seconds now, that quantity is going to be 10 again. Okay, and uh, and the reason for that is is because we wrote a little bit of code. And remember, none of this came with Broadleaf. This is all. This is imagine yourselves out. You've got a you've got a particular business requirement for something like this, and you can implement this in a day or less. Okay, <clears throat> let's see. There, it's ten again. All right. Um, so. That uh, that's the functionality effectively that we've uh, that we've uh, th that I added for this presentation, and I'm going to dig into the code here. Um, I'm not going to try to check out because I can't check out in 30 seconds. So, um, but uh, I don't think it matters. I hope uh, hope you guys get the uh, get the the idea here. Let's look at some code. All right. Um, first things first. The uh, this right here is what you get when you download the starter project or, or if you go to GitHub. In fact, uh, you could technically go to GitHub right now and download this and, and uh, start using it. Let me, uh, for anybody that, that, cares, that cares or wants to do this right now, it's github.com slash ktisdell. And uh, the, the demo there is, uh, is exactly what I've got. If you clone this, you've got exactly what I've got running on my... Uh, on my local. Okay. Um, 
All right, so, so let's go through the anatomy real quick of what, what we're dealing with. Broadleaf, has, uh, it, it, uh, Broadleaf provides as a starter project basically three, three projects for you. It, it looks like four, but the demo site's actually just the parent palm, okay? Um, we've got an admin, we've got a site, and we've got core. Uh, core is really just your, uh, your domain and business logic that's shared between admin and site, so it makes, pretty much makes sense, right? Um, site is set up, it's really a, a set up as a, a war, and so is admin, and uh, both of them uh, have default configurations. In this particular demo, I haven't changed, I haven't changed, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lie a little bit. I haven't changed a line of code in, uh, in site. Actually, I did change one line, uh, but I'll, I'll show you in a second. Uh, so, so everything that you're seeing is that, that, even including that new functionality, has absolutely no changes uh, to, well, again, I'm lying, almost no changes to the website, okay, except for, except for that little UI piece for the counter, okay. Um, out of the box, you get a number of controllers. Okay, when you get when you download this, you can rename your, you can repackage it, and all that. We've actually got an ant task that does that for you. Um, but all of these controllers uh, provide uh, provide that default functionality. And so, if I go into a controller, one of you, one of the things you're going to see is that uh, you've got it's it's all Spring MVC based. You've got uh, request mappings uh, and. Uh, uh, and, and all we're really doing is delegating to a superclass. So, um, uh, so what we've done is we've done most of the hard work, written a bunch of uh, code that, that represents your controllers, but we haven't necessarily told you what your UR, URLs and URIs have to be. So you, uh, you can, you can, and, we, and we've allowed you an opportunity to either completely override what we've done or, uh, or augment it uh, in whatever way you want. Okay, so... Uh, essentially, all we're doing is delegating up to a uh, to a superclass there. Um, the other thing, the other thing to note here, and and probably the most important place to start, is in the web inf file or uh, uh, web.xml file. Um, it, it's pretty, it's pretty much a normal uh, a normal configuration for a war file. Uh, except for one one thing in particular, or uh, uh, <coughs> I should say two things in particular. One is this patch location. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> one is this patch location, and the patch location is what I mentioned earlier. It's it's your way of telling Broadleaf which uh, application context files to use instead uh, to override uh, the default be behavior of Broadleaf. Okay, so I've got a I've got a number of them in here, and uh, uh, a lot of them are right there in the web inf. One of them's just that application context uh, on the right, right on the class path. So that's the one I'm going to be most interested in in showing you guys right now. Um, the uh, the other thing that is probably it, it very much worth mentioning, if I can find it here, is this. All right, so if, you're, uh, if you've used Spring in a web app before, you're familiar with the context loader listener. Uh, we've, uh, we've extended that and created a merge context loader listener. All right, this, uh, this essentially, in, mo in, most, in almost every way, delegates down to, uh, to Spring, except, for the, the, except that it merges uh, your uh, configuration on top of ours and overrides things first. Okay, and so Spring really has no idea that that's happened. We just hijack the hijack part of that, and uh, and then let Spring merrily go on its way. Okay, beyond that, everything else is pretty much uh, pretty much straightforward and standard in this web.xml file. Um, now, oops. the the rest of the uh, the rest of the heavy lifting in this particular app comes in up in core, okay? And a couple of things to show you in core. First of all, you'll notice I've, these, these uh, packages that have uh, uh, spring one, uh, demo.spring one uh, in the package name, those are, those are the ones I created for the purpose of this demo. Okay, so this is where you'd, you'd write your own custom business logic domain uh, entities and so forth. Um, 
and I'm going to show you each of, the, each of the things that I've created. I think there's only 10 classes here that I've created. Some of them were probably ma uh, not mandatory. They were, you could have uh, gone without them. I've uh, created some, uh, some entities, um, and those entities in particular, I'll start with order. Okay, remember I said that I extended, uh, extended the shopping cart or the order? I did this by creating a class called Demo Order, okay? It, it looks pretty, uh, pretty normal. It, uh, it, it's got the at entity annotation. It uh, pr pr provides a table name uh, for that, for that, uh, uh, for that uh, uh, class mapping. And I'm going to go back, by the way, to my trusty squirrel. And you'll see down here that we've got demo order and demo skew. And uh, they're just kind of magically there now. Um, uh, let me go back. Okay. So a couple of things to note. I, uh, I'm, ex I'm extending Broadleaf's order impl, okay? Um, and I also implement my own interface for this domain. Um, you don't, I don't, that's not a requirement, but it's, we, we generally recommend it because there's some things, nice things you can do around proxying and AOP and stuff like that. Um, the, the next thing you'll note, I, I just, uh, I've got one property on this, and that's uh, the expiration date of the shopping cart. So uh, if, you, if, it, if you haven't put something in your shopping cart for 30 seconds, it expi it's expired, okay? Really straightforward. There's nothing really, excuse me, nothing more to it than that. Um, the, uh, the demo skew is pretty much the same, but you'll notice, you'll notice one thing that's a little bit different, and that is this admin presentation annotation. Okay, what we've done is provided some annotations, some custom annotations that allow you to present uh, these fields to the admin console. Okay, and what we're doing is we're basically saying that, you know, it's going to go, it's going to be grouped in this group, and this is going to be the friendly name. Uh, there is a way to internationalize that too, but that's the simplest way to do it for now if you don't need to. Um, and, uh, and, and that's really all there is to it. So uh, that's, that's, how, uh, that's all we needed to do from a coding perspective to get two new tables uh, and, a, uh, and, and make, them, uh, make, them, make the admin aware of them uh, from, a, from a code perspective. Now, from a, a, from a configuration perspective, there's two other things that we needed to do. There's one... one is in this persistence.xml file. Okay, remember I mentioned persistence.xml, we, we, uh, we do some interesting things with persistence unit uh, post-processor. Uh, you'll notice that there's, there's, nothing, there, this, there's nothing here really. <laughs> it's, it's bare. And so how, how is it possible that this, uh, this file represents uh, all the information needed by the persistence unit to, uh, to power all of those tables that we saw? Well, the reason is, it's, it goes back to the merge that I was talking about. Broadleaf actually provides a, uh, a default persistence.xml uh, file that I'm going to show you right now. And uh, so this is inside the Broadleaf uh, framework jar. And this has a lot of stuff in it. You'll see all these classes that are, that are there. Uh, you also see some default properties. And... Uh, and you'll, uh, you'll see some mapping files in the, uh, for, for the uh, queries. Okay, what Broadleaf does, again, is merges these uh, persistence XML files for you so that you can add your own, uh, so that you can add your own uh, classes to it without a whole bunch of extra verbose uh, configuration. That's all, all you're doing is adding these classes and you're pretty much done, okay? Okay. Um, the last thing that you need to do to expose those entities to Broadleaf, and it is the one last thing, um, is there's a special application context that is not merged with, uh, with the rest of Broadleaf. And that has to do with entities. Um, this, is, uh, this is the, uh, uh, this particular XML file, this uh, merge uh, entity uh, application context XML file is and it is a special case, and the reason it's a special case is, uh, well, let me step back. What, it, what it's there for is to expose um, an entity implementation, your entity implementation, uh, to Broadleaf via the name of the interface. Okay, so Broadleaf uh, has a default configuration for all of these things 
Uh, uh, normally, normally it's order impl instead of demo order impl the way that we've implemented it here. And, what, and when Broadleaf creates new, in, uh, new instances of these entities, it doesn't really create those instances when it needs them. What it does is it asks Spring to give it, give it the, uh, the implementation that it needs. Okay, and then, it, and then, of course, it hands it off to Hibernate to persist it and so forth. When it actually queries Hibernate for that, uh, Hibernate does its own magic to actually create the, uh, create the entity a along with uh, whatever uh, polymorphic relationships and, uh, it, it needs. Okay, so all we've done is we've extended demo order, we've extended, or we've extended the order, we've extended the SKU. We told Broadleaf, instead of using your own order, use, uh, use this one. Um, and instead of using uh, instead of using your SKU, use this one. When it uh, when it goes and query, queries, it Hibernate takes care of those joins for you, and uh, and and you're done. Broadleaf now uh, is aware of your implementation, and you didn't have to do anything more than that. So that's how that's how this. Uh, that's how we've leveraged Spring and Hibernate in some creative ways to, make, to allow you to, to basically uh, come up with your own implementations for entities and extend the framework without actually changing framework code. Okay. Um, so that's entities. Oh, and I mentioned that there is a, this is a special case, by the way. This particular file does not get merged into the rest of the application context the way that I've described. Okay. The application context the, the, it does get merged into a into a default application context that's that's specifically for these types of entities, but the reason that it's not in the main application context, like like, uh, uh, like uh, other things like say services, for example, is that uh, we provide some hooks for uh, for instrumentation, and and that's important to note um, since since uh, since. Since we provide uh, hooks for instrumentation, we can't let Spring load those things before the. Uh, we can't let the class loaders load those things before they've been instrumented. So one of the things that. Uh, so if you if, uh, and the and the number one feature of that is is if you've got. Uh, remember I mentioned that joined uh, the joined in inheritance strategy is the default. If you if you decide I can't use joined, I don't. I I can't. I just I absolutely need to use single table for some reason. We actually provide some instrumentation that allows you to. Uh, that allows you to change that annotation at runtime, and uh, and therefore use single table inher uh, single table inheritance. Um, and and in order to do that, we've uh, we've had to actually separate these uh, contexts out. So this is a special case, um, and uh, and it's uh, uh, like I say, it, it just prevents the class loader from loading certain things before instrumentation happens. So, um, okay. That's all you needed to do to extend the entities and make them available to Broadleaf. Now, how do you actually use those entities? Broadleaf's not going to know about any of your uh, new properties. Uh, so how do you actually use them? Well, the, there's a couple of things. Uh, first of all, if you write your own controllers or you, uh, you, you extend the controllers uh, that, we've, that we've provided, that's one way, to, one way to access those properties the way, that, uh, way I'm talking about here. But there's there's other things too. You can actually, uh, as I mentioned, inject some uh, some uh, workflow activities. You can uh, actually override services, and so let me sh and you can actually create net new services. So let me uh, let me show you how we've done this. Um, broadly, uh, what what I've done is I've created a, I've created a service called Demo Cart Expiration Service. Okay, and all it has on it is two methods. It, uh, it's got an, a method to expire the cart, and it's got a method to get the next date, the next uh, expiration date for any given cart. Ba basically, another date 30 seconds, of, 30 seconds in the future. Okay, and if I go look at the implementation of this, uh, this is pretty normal. I've got a standard at service annotation. I've got a, I've given it a bean name. It's the demo cart expiration service, uh, and I've injected Broadleaf's order service into it. Okay. Uh, using the Broadleaf uh, standard bean name BL order service. And uh, I've gone ahead and made this transactional, as, as you'd expect. And uh, I've also uh, uh, implemented some logic here. And we can, uh, I'm not, not going to step through every bit of logic here, but uh, unless uh, somebody wants me to later. Um, but basically, I've, uh, all I'm doing here is I am, uh, I'm calling remove item from cart if that item is expired, okay? And, uh, 
and the way that uh, remove item from cart works is under the covers it actually calls a workflow and that workflow is where we're going to plug in our next bit of business logic. Okay. So so far we haven't uh, we've written a couple of services but we haven't even written any code to talk to call these services or use these services and how, so how does Broadleaf make use of them? All right. Well, there is actually let me let me go down here. Pull this up real quick. All right. Remember, I mentioned that that, that there was an application context that's uh, being that that I defined in the web.xml file that's going to be merged and override some things, or or in in our case, add some things. Well, here's what here's what we're adding, and I'm gonna. This is a little verbose, so we're gonna ignore some of this. Um, I'm I'm adding a task scheduler uh, that's gonna actually run in the background and expire these things. Um, I went ahead and uh, added a component scan. Because, I, because one of the things I added was an, a, a, a net new service that Broadleaf doesn't know about, and it, it's got its own uh, at service annotation, so I need it to be able to find that thing. And uh, the last things that you're going to see here are three, uh, I think they're four actually. Um, there's something called BL add, uh, add item workflow, and this BL add item workflow is this is a copy and paste from Broadleaf's uh, uh, default. Uh, uh, configuration, but what it does is it allows you it, this uh, this set of activities allows you to uh, override or add activities to this default workflow. And this workflow's got things like it validates the uh, add request or uh, it checks the availability. It uh, uh, adds uh, the order item to the order. Um, it adds fulfillment groups. It does things like that. And what we do at the very end is this is our brand new uh, activity that we that I wrote. And, uh, and it's the uh, demo add flash item activity, okay? And this demo flash, uh, add flash item activity uh, does nothing but go through and it really doesn't do anything but go through and call an inventory service to decrement inventory, okay? Pretty, pretty straightforward. And the, the, and the other thing that it does is it, uh, it schedules it uses that task, task scheduler to schedule uh, an expiration time. Okay. The, uh, uh, now, now that we've done that, there's absolutely nothing that we had to, else that we had to change. We've added all this net new code, and Broadleaf is going to go happily use it. Without, uh, without you changing, adding control, uh, controller logic right now or doing anything else that, uh, uh, that uh, is, is invasive, okay? So that's why it's pretty, pretty powerful stuff, I think, because, because you, you're basically able to take something out of the box, a framework that's wrapped, around, wrapped inside of a, a, uh, a starter application uh, add some pretty complex uh, business logic like a, like a flash sale uh, a expiring shopping cart and without actually writing very much code or doing much configuration and you can do it in a couple of hours literally and Broadleaf will start using it as soon as you uh, fire it up and, and make use of it. Okay. Um, and again, uh, this, is all, this is all possible because of uh, Spring and the way that we've, uh, that we've uh, extended the spring framework. All right. Basically, I've done, and I'm not going to get into all of them because the the point's the same. We've got uh, we've got a uh, a remove item workflow that uh, has a, an activity that uh, that uh, increments the inventory again. If you you take not you, if you go and take the item out, we uh, increment the inventory. So, and and that's the one that's actually called when the when the card expires. So that's the last thing I want to show you is the uh, is this cart expiration event. All this does is implements runnable and all it does is uh, we, uh, I've got it configured as a, let me go back over here, I've got it configured right here as a, again, a, a prototype scoped uh, uh, bean, um, but I, and I, I want it to be, I need it to be prototype scope because it's going to have some state on it, and that, that mean, the card ID in, in particular, but I also need it to have uh, that, that task scheduler available to it, and I need it to have the uh, card expiration service because that's what it's going to call to do the expiration of the shopping cart. Um, it's, all it does is implements runnable. Um, when, 
the task scheduler calls run, all it does is calls that expire cart. All that, a car, that, all that method does is calls uh, remove item from cart, which is a broadleaf standard uh, API call. Uh, all that's going to do is execute a workflow. I've injected my custom business logic into that workflow. Uh, it, uh, it takes care of the inventory for me. If, uh, if, and then uh, all that happens is it basically says, hey, uh, um, that, that, uh, that uh, order wasn't, wasn't necessarily expired yet. Somebody might have, uh, somebody might have updated it, and therefore uh, the, the expiration date's changed. All I'm doing is getting the exp uh, an expiration date back. If it's not null, then I reschedule it with the new date. And if it is null, then I, I just uh, remove it from the queue and carry on. Um, and so that is really all there is to, uh, uh, to the code in this demo. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, it's, it's, there's a few little pieces in it. Um, I, I wanted to make sure I covered the anatomy, but uh, that, uh, that is, in a nutshell, the code, the, uh, the demo. And uh, let me talk real quick about what the future of Broadleaf is. Um, we're, we're, we're working on a number of features. Um, they seem, the priorities and backlog seems, seem to change every day, uh, depending on who knows what. Um, but uh, some of the, and, and in no particular order, uh, these, uh, these things, in, uh, the, these new features include uh, reporting. We're, we're going to do some, we're doing some really interesting stuff with reporting because uh, anybody that's done anything with reporting knows that it's, uh, it's, it's pretty difficult to write and save and deal with uh, all the metadata and things that go with the report and graphs and charts and, and so forth. So, uh, so that's, uh, we're doing some very, very innovative stuff with, uh, with the Hibernate API and, and uh, the JPA API to, to make that happen. A/B testing is another uh, another feature that we're that we're putting in there. Subscription sales is is another one, and uh, believe it or not, that's actually uh, more complicated than I expected it to be, just because of the whole billing concept. Um, catalog change sets is is uh, pretty close, if not already done. That's basically the idea of a content managed catalog data. We we we, uh, we allow you to change the uh, change the data in the catalog, just like you can with with our static content. And uh, and then publish it to a sandbox, review it, uh, look, you know, uh, have other people review it, send it through a workflow of people, and then uh, and then eventually publish it to a target. So, um, gift cards and vouchers are another one. Order management, it's order management's. Fr frankly, we've tried to stay out of the order management business because uh, uh, there are a lot of products out there, and nobody, uh, you know, that that do it probably better than we do. Um, but every but everybody's asking for it. Everybody wants sort of that single UI to deal with everything. So. So we're gonna we're gonna make a, make an effort at it and and continue to work on it. Um, flash sales. I just showed you how easy it was to implement flash sales. We'll probably do a little bit something a little bit more uh, uh, hardened than what I've just done here. Um, auctions and uh, and then a recommendations engine. We've got a bunch of others, but I wanted to uh, I just wanted to kind of point those out. These uh, these are some big ones on our roadmap right now, and uh, uh, and again we'll be using a lot of the same tools. A lot of the same uh, um, techniques, and hopefully, uh, hopefully, we'll be as innovative, <coughs> uh, continue to be as innovative as we have been uh, with these new things going forward. So, uh, I'm going to finish up with a quote from my uh, from my boss, the president of Broadleaf. Uh, nobody, nobody ever got fired for using Broadleaf either. Um, so, <laughs> go download it and give it a try. <laughs> uh, and. Uh, uh, and like I said, if you if you actually get the uh, the code off of GitHub that I uh, uh, that I that I showed earlier, uh, you're, you're running the same demo that I am. So, um, a couple other things here. Uh, yeah. So that, with that, I'm going to go ahead. I believe that's uh, that's it. So I'll take questions now. I was totally thorough, wasn't I? Nobody has any questions. Clients, uh, okay. I, I don't think there's a. Uh, I don't. I, I think I can say this. Um, I know for for sure that the the, the big ones are um, Pet Boys, Container Store, Waste Management, and um, Gans. If you have uh, kids or uh, makers of Webkins, um, uh, are using it as well. Those are those are some of the big ones. Um, and there's a, uh, there's a, a company in uh, London 
that uh, called the, the called Luster um, that that's using it as well. I believe they were well. In fact, I know they were acquired by Fab.com, and so uh, tech and then they're still using it right now. I don't know if they're going to make a switch at some point, but uh, uh, to to Fab's technology. But uh, right now, uh, technically, Fab is using it. <laughs> so. Yeah, so we've got uh, we've got a number of them, including uh, CybersourceAuthorized.net and PayPal. Um, th uh, let's see, there are there are a few more that are in the works. Um, I th some of them are actually not open source. We're uh, we're, we're providing some of these things as commercial features. So uh, the Authorized.net is definitely open source, though. Uh, we've got some other plugins as well, by the way. Just, just may as well mention them. Things like uh, UPS and uh, and FedEx integration, and uh, we're we're developing more. Of course, we uh, uh, we love love contributions from the community too. So. <laughs> Uh, it, it, well, as an open source company, our business model is really around services. So uh, uh, we provide a number of services, including consulting, training, and uh, uh, and support. Um, so those are those are really where we're at. The support, as far as support goes, support includes um, commercial features as well as uh, as light as. Um, as as well as uh, support of the uh, software guarantee, guarantees on SLA. Are there many commercial open sources? Uh, well, a lot of the ones on the roadmap that I just showed you are going to be commercial. Yeah, they're they're in the works right now. So um, most of what most of what you've just seen is, in fact, as far as I know, all of what you just seen is uh, is open source though. Um, all the commercial features that are coming are going to be, uh, um, uh, th th or, or that are already here, uh, are are in addition to what you've what you've seen. So we're, you know, I mean, what what can you say? We're really trying to get, we're really trying to, we, we want everybody to use it. We want adoption, but we also we also know that there are a lot of enterprise features that people are going to need, especially uh, larger uh, companies are going to need, and so um, so that's that's really what those are for. So it's basically a you, you buy the you buy the uh, uh, you buy the commercial offering, you get the features as well as the support, and 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 there there may be an opportunity. I'm not I'm not really sure about the exact details of the marketing, but I think that what we're going to end up doing, we we may end up having some a la carte options as well. So, uh, since 2009. Uh, that, the question was, how long have we been in business? I should probably should probably be re repeating the. I think I'm being recorded, so I should probably <laughs> repeat some of the questions. So, uh, sorry about that. Um, we've been in business since 2009. On the website, you mentioned you have uh, brain chips integration. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that is complete as well. Yeah. Yeah. Brain tree integration. We've, uh, like I said, we've done. We've done work with Spring Social to integrate uh, uh, some uh, integrate with Facebook and other other things. So, um, there. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I mean, um, get, definitely go to the website though. That's got, that's where all the actual features are and where the roadmap is. Um, these, some of these things were worth noting, but we've got a lot of a uh, uh, lot more information on the website. And by the way, uh, if you go to uh, if you go to broadleafcommerce.org, uh, yeah, I said org. We've got a dot com and a dot org. Um, uh, on the .org side, uh, there is documentation that includes getting started. Uh, I mean, it's dirt simple. We we'll, we even give you you download a zip file that's your, that's actually an Eclipse workspace. So you open it up and you're using the features right now. So and and doing the development right now. So uh, I would encourage everybody to give it a try if if, if it's something that uh, interests you. And like I said, don't. Uh, if you're not if 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 you're not necessarily interested in in a in an e-commerce project right now or not doing anything necessarily with e-commerce right now, take a look at the code. I mean, it's uh, like I say, we've, we're doing some innovative stuff uh, that's probably interesting to uh, the com uh, the Spring community at large. Anything? How many developers you have working on? Uh, about well, uh, developers working for us about twelve. Twelve, I think it's twelve. Yeah, and uh, and, uh, and then we, and we get some. We do get some uh, community uh, uh, involvement as well. It's uh, it's not as it's not as high as we want it to be. But then again, it's uh, you know it's it typically isn't. So we're 
where uh, all of the all of, most of the features that you're seeing, most of the code, it, most most of the community community involvement so far has really been bug fixes, not uh, not uh, major features. So, um, but we still encourage it, and especially plugins like anything. Uh, I mean, you guys saw how easy it is to plug something in. Uh, I mean. Um, there's nothing stopping you from from writing a, your own commercial feature. In fact, that's that's on our roadmap too. Is a uh, is sort of a developer marketplace where you could you can you're going to be able to submit uh, your own broadleaf plugins and uh, and charge money for them. So. If, what's that? Yeah, and that's what we're we're doing the same thing. So yeah, that's that's on the roadmap. What, what you that's why I'm saying you can actually develop plugins, and we're gonna we're gonna provide a marketplace for you to uh, uh, to uh, make them freely available or to uh, or to actually sell them. So. No, we don't. Well, we're doing that. That's sort of an ad hoc thing right now. There's no. We don't have a, a formal solution or a formal offering for hosting. Uh, I mean, we're that's something that that we'll negotiate. But we're not. Uh, we're not doing much of that right now. We're not trying. We're not necessarily trying to compete with uh, uh, big commerce or, or or anybody like that right now. We're trying to provide a framework uh, as opposed to uh, as opposed to. Uh, hosting services like that. Although one of the things that we do have that I didn't mention is uh, multi-tenant uh, support, and uh, that's not open source either. Um, but what that what that does is it uh, it's not just multi-tenant in one database. What it does is uh, it resolves a data source, so you can have a single you can have a single application that talks to uh, multiple data sources, and uh, and each data source is an online store, or a host, so um, or a, a a tenant, so. Uh, that will uh, uh, that's something and we're, we're actually looking to partner we've got a couple of opportunities to partner with some uh, some people uh, uh, you know in that that, that actually want to want to be the, the those kind of uh, hosting providers and using broadleaf so uh, we're I don't know that we're going to get into that necessarily I don't know what the details are but I know that uh, I know that there's some conversation around that and it's uh, you know it's it's in the works Oh yeah, absolutely. In fact, it was built with that with that in mind. All of that is is uh, very uh, uh, very easy to do um, through the admin. Uh, in, in terms of setting up uh, your URLs and things like that, it's uh, it's very easy to do. Anything else? Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it.